Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting us to participate in the celebration of your 50th anniversary. It is my pleasure, on behalf of the Directorate General for Maritime Affairs and Fisheries, to also wish you a very happy birthday. In celebrating your remarkable 50 years, I think we should celebrate the value of your role and network. You create knowledge, and as Director for Maritime Policy and Blue Economy, in the Director General Mare, I can tell you that geological data and expertise you provide on the European coastal and marine areas are for us an important part of the marine knowledge we need. And you help harmonize it, share it, and use it collectively for Europe. And that collective knowledge is our ammunition against the great challenge of our era. Climate change, biodiversity loss, and transitioning towards a low-impact economy that serves the environment as much as the people. And I'm here to provide our perspective towards this transition, and in general, the transition we envisage under the Green Deal. Our priorities, if you wish. For most of these priorities, we need more and better geological data, more knowledge and expert assessment. This is what we need. So we want to address the vulnerability of our coastal zones then we need to know more on the historical evolution of the coast. So all the data collected decades ago and hidden away in some depositories all around Europe need to be retrieved and made available by organisations like yours who take on a pan-European effort. Or say, if we want to protect human life and infrastructure and maximise our investment in adaptation and resilience, then we need to know precisely the effects of climate change and of its extreme weather events on the stability of our coasts. The same goes for better connectivity between land and sea data, where geological data come in again. A topic that has climbed to the top of the European Commission's agenda is renewable energy, particularly offshore. We now aim to cover 40% of our energy needs with renewables by 2030, and a lot of it needs to come from the sea. But we must make sure that this massive growth of offshore renewables to decarbonize the economy does not negate other Euro European Green Deal's objectives, like biodiversity protection or circular economy. Offshore energy and nature protection are not incompatible, but in some cases, deployment may have negative impacts, like habitat degradation and disruption of seabed integrity. And with the geological data at hand, we'll be able to plan investment strategically and to prioritize sites that are not in conflict with nature protection, and even for deeper waters to identify and protect our seabed habitats. We need better resolution data on the marine substrate, and in fact, to implement the Maritime Spatial Planning Directive in general, whether for energy or other blue economy activities, it is robust marine knowledge like the one provided through the Geological Surveys of Europe that give us the edge. And I'm convinced that with sound monitoring and by sharing methodologies and data, the implementation of the MSP Directive would progress faster and more efficiently. And part of that work needs to be done is collaborating with industry and inviting them to share any data they may have to support your assessments and our policies. Neither maritime spatial planning nor any environmental legislation can be effectively implemented without the involvement of stakeholders and local communities. We also want to have geological data that are constant in space and time to evaluate the impacts of activities on marine ecosystems and the impact of our restoration measures. So I really hope that the establishment of a geological survey for Europe can make a difference in terms of geological data connectivity and interoperability. And this is a requirement of the digital age and it is desirable from various perspectives, including that of marine and coastal management. But let's be traditional today. On an important birthday like this one, one looks at past achievements and then we turn to the future. And as far as the past is concerned, you know marine knowledge has long been a priority for my services and that we've been investing heavily on it. And we really greatly appreciate the work of Eurogeo Surveys. We have been working together for over a decade now through eModNet, the European Marine Observation and Data Network, which is a partnership of more than 120 organizations collecting and harmonizing marine field data for public use. 
And as you may know, eModeNet is currently undergoing a big transition of its own, a centralization process. And this means that all thematic disciplines, including, of course, geology, will all come together and be hosted under a single eModeNet domain. This will allow users to access multidisciplinary data simultaneously and in a standardized format. To support the implementation of the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, one of our next goals is increasing the availability of data for sea floor integrity. And to achieve this, what you do is obviously paramount. And the nice thing about eModeNet is that it never stops evolving and there are always new goals to reach, but with one constant, letting policymakers and stakeholders have ever more and ever better data at their disposal to do their job. And looking at the next 10 years, your role is going to be even more important. We will need your services in several priority areas, but I'd like to highlight three of them today. First, to help us accomplish a strong, decarbonized and sustainable blue economy in sectors like fisheries, agriculture, renewable energy. Second, to implement the mission, restore our oceans and waters across all sea basins. And third, to develop the European Digital Twin Ocean. I believe that these priorities have a lot of relevance for your own work and for the future and aspirations of the geological surveys of Europe. The Mission Ocean's tools are basin specific, lighthouses, portfolios of projects that develop, test and deploy transformative and innovative solutions in four specific areas. So we've got the Atlantic Arctic, we have the Mediterranean, the Baltic North Sea and the Danube River. And other key enablers are a digital knowledge ocean and a water system and the mobilization and engagement of the public and the European digital twin of the ocean. So imagine a tool that would allow us to predict how climate change and human activity affect sensitive and valuable ecosystems that helps to devise better and more efficient management plans and that takes into consideration both environmental conservation and socio and economic prosperity. That is what we would like the digital twin to do. The European Commission's President von der Leyen sees the development of a digital twin ocean as the European contribution to the global marine knowledge landscape. This core infrastructure, to which we have already allocated over 35 million euros for the period 21 to 2022, will provide open access to data, models and services, and will be the main component of a digital knowledge system that will hopefully revolutionize the manner in which policy, industry and society understand and manage the ocean. But we're not starting from scratch because we can build on the European Commission's long-standing investments in marine knowledge. We have Copernicus Marine, we have eModnet, and we've got the multiple EU research and innovation actions of excellence. We'll be able to provide a first prototype already by the end of 2024. And for all of this, we will need more and more knowledge. So directly or indirectly in the next decade, you'll be contributing to these goals. We look forward to a continuation of our work together as we've been doing successfully for more than a decade now, where through our mutual and synergetic activities, we can act in unison to maximize the available marine knowledge for all. And thank you once again uh, for being with you today.